This is how this podcast could gain hundreds of thousands of followers in the next few months. And by the way, my name is Felipe Fontes and I scaled my own podcast to 200,000 followers in only one year. I've helped other podcasts like Connect the Dot Scale to 20,000 followers only three weeks after launching. And I hope to give you as much value as possible in these videos so that you can do the same with your podcast. And I just want to say that I actually respect this podcast a lot. They're one of the most listened to podcasts on audio platforms in countries like South Africa and Albania and probably some other countries as well but i just think if they fine-tuned their digital presence they could actually take their impact and influence to a world stage and ultimately just take it to the next level first thing i will shout out is i like what you're doing here with the name because instagram names are searchable so if someone's searching for a business and self-development podcast then they will come across your page so more podcasts should actually do that it also just tells me exactly what the podcast is about which is great and the bio is also great, very clear. So anyone starting their own podcast or going their podcast, literally do this. Who are the hosts? What is your podcast about? And a quick call to action to listen to your latest episode is great. So all that looks good, but let's get into these highlights right here. This is actually prime real estate for you to put your Spotify, Apple, and YouTube links. And let me show you what I mean. Bang. These guys do a great job. The Basement Yard Podcast, they're real pros, and we're going to get into thumbnails and stuff and how they do a great job in that so stick around for that but as far as the highlights go first off they look great i know exactly where to go if i want to get the spotify link the apple link and the youtube link and if you want to pay them a little bit of money and be part of their patreon then that's linked right there as well now obviously this looks great and it's a very visible call to action towards their long form but an underrated aspect of this is that you can actually clean up your link in bio so that you don't have multiple links or a link tree something that actually distracts the viewer and keeps them from converting towards wherever you're trying to push them this way you're able to push them towards your main priority in this case i think they have a live event but for you it could just be your youtube if you want to prioritize one platform and i would suggest to prioritize youtube because 65 percent of new podcast listeners prefer to watch their favorite podcast on YouTube. So the next thing we'll get into is your presentation or how you're presenting yourself to new viewers on your profile grid, which is a very important aspect because new viewers are going to choose to follow you if they understand what they're getting and if you're presenting a captivating look on your social. And from this right here, I can tell you that you're not. And the reason being is that there's a lot of cut off faces, which already throws me off because first off, it just doesn't look good. And second, I can't see the full face of the host. And the second thing is that the text on the thumbnails aren't pungent like they don't pop out at me and they're not very clicky so for example this one here says remember the first time you ever saw a screen it was and that's it and so the faces are cut off and the text isn't clicky and up here you can see that they're using some photos in order to enhance the thumbnails but it's the same photo on all three that is just repetitive and redundant so i would definitely change those images that is a tactic that you can use in general when you're building your personal brand as far as using captivating images as a thumbnail instead of screenshots however when it's a podcast usually a screenshot of a speaker from the podcast a host or a guest actually works best because it tells the viewer that this is a podcast whereas this might not tell me that also again even though the photo does look good the text isn't clicky like open ai and reddit partnership that isn't really clickable to me but if you gave me a sneak peek on what you guys say about this partnership like open ai and reddit partnership is horrible or is fantastic then that gives me a sneak peek so this podcast is a great example of showing clear faces and text on the thumbnail like two circumcisions on the text kind of makes me curious to watch now not all of these texts are super clicky so they definitely could do better in some aspects here but you can see how they maintain consistency across their whole profile now i understand you guys are doing it remote it would be better if you could do it in person because it would allow you to just get better footage and therefore get better thumbnails but if you are recording remote these guys do a great job of just showing their face on every single one these are a little too zoomed in for my liking so i would try to zoom zoom out in some way but as you can see very very clear the text is not in the way of their face for the most part and they have a consistency with their presentation so when we get into the actual edits of the video there's a few things that we can get into first things first let's improve the quality of our setups now this guy right here looks amazing the quality is amazing he's far enough back to where when we create social clips he's not going to be too zoomed in but the other host is super 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 zoomed in and so this is the problem when you're this close to the camera when you create a social clip it's gonna look like this you're way too zoomed in as i talked 
about in another audit, it's just not comfortable for a viewer. They're gonna swipe right away when someone's this close to their face. If you're further away like the other guy, you're gonna be able to create a social clip and still have proper distance from the camera. So it would be a huge improvement if both of us started getting on this level right here. The social clip overall would look a lot better and also you'd be able to make quality thumbnails from them. And when you make this change, you'll see how you'll easily be able to make good thumbnails. For example, there's no way you can make a good thumbnail with this, he's too close and if you put any text on screen, it's gonna be over his face and it's just not gonna look good. On the other hand, this one has the makeup of a good thumbnail. All you would have to do in this case is scroll the thumbnail up when you're choosing the thumbnail, just move it up so you're getting his whole face and then you can put the text under his face there and that would look a lot better, the quality's better and you're not too zoomed in. And again guys, let's avoid the split screen here where you're not getting anyone's full face. All right, the next thing is making sure that we're getting good hooks at the start of our video. If you're recording an hour long podcast or longer or something like that, which these videos are, you're definitely gonna be able to get a lot of good short form clips from that, but it's super important to find the right hooks, which generally tend to be a well-delivered question or statement. And this delivery can be amplified if you're using either a proper noun, like a name that everyone is familiar with, or a buzzword that's super topical in today's day and age, or just the current climate we're in. So I'm going to show you a social clip from this podcast that has the makeup of a good social video, but they slightly missed the hook by a few seconds. Exposure to the future. A lot of the mental health that we have around the world is the complexity of what's going on around us. Starting that social clip just a few seconds after that initial statement would have actually been a great hook when he says, a lot of the mental health that we have around the world, blah, blah, blah. And the reason that would have been a great hook is because you're starting it off with a strong statement that also has a topical word, mental health. People love talking about that in general and there's definitely controversial opinions, whether it's real or not or whatever, I don't get into it. So yeah, super important to start off your podcast clip with a very clear delivered hook that's usually either a statement or a question and it helps when you refer to something that is very topical controversial or that people just like talking about another thing is please include value in your videos before adding a CTA to push towards your long-form content a lot of people are so eager to push their short-form viewers to go watch their long form that they actually exclude the value that is going to make the viewer want to go watch the long form in the first place and here's a clear example of that there's no comparison physicality to physicality when it comes to machines mm. That was literally the whole video. And it actually was a good hook if there was more explanation afterwards. Like I wanna hear about why there's no comparison to whatever he was talking about. But because it was so quick, I didn't get any value out of it. So if I don't get value out of a short form clip, why would I assume there's value in whatever else you're creating? See, the thing is for people to actually want to watch your long form, you have to give them enough value in the short form for them to actually believe that there's value in the long form. Or else people are just going to assume that your long form is going to be just as value deprived as your short form. So you need to treat this just like business. You need to give them so much free value that in their head they're like, wow, I can't believe they gave me all that free value for free. Imagine how much value there is in the paid content. This is just like that, except they're gonna think, wow, look at how much value there was in the short form clip. Imagine how much value there is in the long form clip. So yeah, treat it like a conversion mechanism and make sure you're giving actual substance in your short form clips. You wanna make it as engaging as possible. Start off with a great hook, validate that great hook with good substance afterwards, and maybe even include more hooks and more substance afterwards to keep the viewer engaged for a long period of time. And then only after that can you include a CTA to go watch your long Long form. At that point, it makes sense. But if you don't include any value in your video, it doesn't make sense. The last thing I'll say as far as short form content goes is to always keep the captions the same style across all your short form videos. As you can see here, this is one style. And then here, this is another style. Here, this is another style. And then here, this is another style. So look, there's nothing wrong with experimenting with different caption styles. But once you find one, stick with one. It's going to help with that overall consistency. And again, the clarity that your viewer gets when they come on your page is communicated in the consistency of your presentation, which in big part is your captions alongside your thumbnails and others. All right, now let's get into the long form. First, let's just make sure we have consistency in the title. So as you can see in these first two, you have ep 219, ep 218. But in this third one, the episode is at the end. 
Same with this one down here. And then here we have two episode 215s. So you just have to make sure that you're clearly organizing that so that new viewers could get a good understanding of your overall podcast and episode delivery. The second thing is that your title text and the thumbnail text are the exact same, which it shouldn't be. The title, you can leave it exactly how it is. Maybe give a good description of what your podcast is about. You can include different keywords, but your thumbnail should be something that's very clicky that adds context to whatever the title is. For example, Brett Malinowski of the We're Gonna Make It podcast does a great job of this. As you can see here, he has his title and then he has the text on the thumbnail that actually complement one another. So they shouldn't be the same. The title should actually help for SEO purposes and the thumbnail should have text that makes the viewer want to click on that video and ultimately just give more context around what the title is about as well. So in this case, the 20 year old making $100,000 a month with no code. I can see here software development. Obviously software development goes right in line with no code. And then you can see here at the bottom, $1.2 million with no code. Like that's the clicky text that's going to make me want to click on that. Again, it complements the $100,000 a month, but it's not the same thing. And then the last thing I'll say as far as the long form goes is that you should always add a teaser at the beginning of your episodes. Now, what is a teaser? A teaser is a compilation of the best moments of your podcast. The reason you're going to want to incorporate this is because new viewers are only going to want to stick around if they get value at the beginning of your episode. And so you give them a taste of that value, a taste of what they're going to get in the very beginning of your episode. Because the nature of podcast is that you're going to start it very conversationally talking about the day-to-day, -day, the weather, whatever's going on that day. And that is enough for a new viewer to click off right away because they didn't get validated. We just need dopamine hits very early. That's how we are as consumers. And that doesn't mean you need to change the intro of your podcast, but ultimately just get the best moments, put them at the very front. And if you're a podcast consumer, you've seen the best podcasts do this. Here's an example. Let's talk about money. I love money because I feel like it's a game. So 50 million in revenue of Sour Strips in the last five years. Years. It didn't happen overnight, so it happened on over a decade. The harder you work, the luckier you get. Max. So all he did there was take the best moments of that episode, put them at the front. Now me as a viewer is intrigued to see the context behind some of the statements that were made. Maybe I want to see the reaction to some of these remarks, but ultimately it just makes me want to get the popcorn ready because I'm excited for what I'm about to sit through. And no, you don't need these crazy edits. They do add to the effect, but a more informational podcast like the Expansive Podcast doesn't really need all of that, but just put some of the most value packed moments in the beginning so that I know what I'm going to get. So do this opposed to what you guys are currently doing, which I'll put on the screen right now. Hi, and welcome to the Expansive Podcast. My name is Eric Kruger. I'm a keynote speaker and author. And as always, I am joined by my fellow keynote speaker. And so this is a very traditional welcome and intro to the podcast, and that's very normal. And they do a great job of presenting social proof of who they are and why you should listen. But again, it's not enticing enough. It doesn't provide me enough of a dopamine hit in order to stick around through the rest of the episode. So if you just paired that with a strong teaser in the beginning, and then you gave that social proof, that's awesome. Like I have every reason to stick around and actually watch the whole episode. So just adding that little teaser in the beginning, that can be anywhere from like 30 seconds to a minute. If you want to keep it shorter, you definitely can. But but you just need to give viewers a quick feel for what's to come. Okay, and one last thing with TikTok. Make sure to put your YouTube link here in the bio to make sure that your biggest fans, the people that actually enjoy your content, know how to go watch your long form. A lot of them won't care to watch the same content that they're watching already on TikTok, on Instagram, since you're posting the same short form content on there. So I would make sure that we prioritize. You can leave your Instagram link on there just in case somebody does, but make sure that your YouTube is the one that is showing so that people have an easy way to go watch the long form after consuming your short form. And then the last Last thing with TikTok is just that whenever you have videos that have views under like 200, so like these 79, 82, 80, like you went on a quick cold streak right here, delete and repost them because TikTok is usually going to push your videos out to at least 200 people. So you should get a minimum of 200 views. So this probably means that you were shadow banned for a quick little moment. Like it happens to everyone. Just delete your videos and repost them so that you can actually start doing normal on your videos like with these and then hopefully start getting to the thousands as your video quality and your content gets a lot better based off of what we talked about before. Now, I just want to say that I really respect this podcast. Actually, both of these hosts are very established in their field. They are both thought leaders. So if they just took their digital presence to the next level, I believe that they can increase their impact to a global stage and just overall increase their impact and influence to a whole nother level. So if you guys are watching this, hopefully this helps you out. And if you're a viewer and you want your own podcast and social presence audited, then just comment audit below.